Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, vitamin D. I've talked a lot about vitamin D and there is a lot of information on the internet about uh, vitamin D. Um, I just wanted to um, talk about, uh, in particular, uh, a paper that I came across uh, the other day, uh, which I found uh, quite interesting. Now, a bit of background on vitamin D. Vitamin D was traditionally uh, and has traditionally been seen as a vitamin uh, that is required for um, correct bone formation uh, and the traditional uh, deficiency diseases of vitamin D uh, were osteomalacia in adults and rickets uh, in children. Uh, up until recently, the recommended intake of vitamin D uh, for adults was really based on some very old papers uh, that actually looked at uh, preventing rickets in children uh, and these intakes were actually very low and even the current recommended uh, amounts of vitamin D uh, are still based on uh, these old uh, old studies uh, using the traditional uh, uh, viewpoint that vitamin D is required only uh, for bone formation uh, and these levels will prevent rickets and osteomalacia however more recently research has shown that vitamin D has uh, a far wider physiological role uh, than was previously thought uh, and in particular vitamin D uh, may actually be required for uh, the, correct, uh, the, the correct function of the immune system uh, and it may also be required for the for correct function of the insulin system. Um, now with regard uh, its function uh, in, the, in the correct function of the insulin receptor uh, there are associations between uh, low levels of vitamin D uh, and uh, the development of type 1 and type 2 diabetes and there is also an association between uh, low intakes of vitamin D, uh, low plasma levels of vitamin D uh, and obesity. Um, now the biologically accepted marker of vitamin D is a compound called 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D um, and there has been a, an explosion uh, recently in research looking at the uh, effects of low levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D uh, and in particular uh, there has been uh, a lot of studies that have shown uh, that vitamin D uh, if your plasma levels of vitamin D are higher you have a lower risk of developing cancer a lower risk of developing uh, obesity a lower risk of developing uh, cardiovascular disease um, and, and there is a lot of information on the internet about vitamin D uh, but I came across a study uh, that actually looked uh, at vitamin D and weight loss and I found it quite interesting uh, it was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition and I will put the link uh, in the comments box uh, below this video so that you can have a look at the paper yourself uh, what, the, what the researchers did is they took a, a, a group of women uh, who were overweight uh, th they had um, low levels they were selected specifically because they had uh, low levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin uh, D which is the, the biological marker for vitamin D status uh, and their plasma levels were actually between 10 uh, and 32 nanograms uh, per, uh, per mil uh, and that means that they were actually uh, insufficient uh, borderline deficient in vitamin D. Now uh, what they did is they split the, the women into two groups uh, and one group received a, a 2000 IU supplement of vitamin D and the other group received a placebo so and this was double blind controlled so that n not even the researchers knew who was getting uh, uh, which tablet um, and then the women underwent a, a, a weight loss program that, that tried to to get them to lose about 10% of their body weight uh, and this was done over the course of one year. Now, when the researchers analysed the results, what they found was that there was no difference between the group that was given the vitamin D supplement and the group that was given the placebo. Um, and if they had have uh, analysed the results no further, this study could have been used uh, as evidence to show that the vitamin D supplements had no effect. However, they did uh, a further analysis on the data and they actually regrouped the women. And what they did is they regrouped the women into those women who had had an increase in their plasma levels of vitamin D and those uh, uh, women who had not had an increase in their plasma levels of vitamin D. Uh, and they did this through measurements of the 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D marker in the plasma. 
when they did this, what they found is that those women who responded to the vitamin D supplements with an increase in their plasma levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D actually had a statistically significant increased uh, weight loss compared to those women who had had no, uh, no such increase. Um, now the difference between the two groups was those groups of women who had a, a large increase in their vitamin D plasma levels uh, lost 8.8 .8 kilograms of uh, body weight uh, and those people uh, who uh, those women who didn't have an increase in their plasma levels of vitamin D uh, only lost 5.5 kilograms and when they also analyzed uh, the waist circumference and uh, uh, other measures of um, uh, obesity or over being overweight such as body fat they also found there was a significant uh, decrease uh, in the treatment group uh, that the sorry in the group that uh, experienced an increase in their plasma levels of vitamin D compared to the group uh, that didn't uh, experience uh, uh, that 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 increase now this is very interesting because firstly it shows that taking a supplement is not the whole story if you take a supplement of vitamin D for it to be effective it has to increase your levels of uh, 2 5 hydroxy vitamin D uh, and that means that you have to tailor the supplement uh, quantity that you take to your own particular biochemistry in order to cause that effect um, clearly some of the women uh, took the supplement um, and did not experience an increase in their plasma levels. Uh, alternatively, some of the women may not actually have taken uh, the, the supplement. And this leads to another interesting point about this study, uh, in that compliance of subjects is often poor. Uh, now, what the researchers did quite cleverly is that they gave the, 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 the women a certain number of tablets, uh, and then they counted the tablets uh, in the pot when they returned uh, the supplements at the end of the study and they could count the supplements uh, left. Uh, usually what the researchers do is they give you more tablets than you need, a random amount more. Uh, they then count the supplements at the end of the study without telling the subjects so that they can assess if there's been compliance uh, between the subjects uh, and the protocol that they've been given. Uh, and, and what they found was that those uh, those women who uh, more closely followed the supplement uh, protocol that was laid out for them, in other words, those women who actually took the vitamin D tablets, actually showed reductions in their plasma levels of a protein called C-reactive protein, uh, which is a marker of inflammation. Um, so this is very interesting because uh, it, it leads to questions about uh, the validity of a lot of research that doesn't, uh, doesn't use these rigorous control mechanisms in their methodology. Um, taking a supplement is not enough. You have to increase your plasma levels. It has to get into the body. Remember what you put in your mouth is not in your body. Your gut is a, an inside out skin until that substance is absorbed to your body. It can't actually have a, a biological effect. Uh, and this is highlighted in this study. Now, if we go back to uh, vitamin D and look uh, at the insulin receptor, uh, vitamin D uh, is required in some way for uh, the insulin receptor to be effective. And those people uh, with low levels of vitamin D may have uh, an increased risk of insulin resistance, which is why the risk of developing type 1 and type 2 diabetes may increase with low plasma levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D. Now, this is very interesting in relation to this study because those women who increased their vitamin D levels lost more weight, uh, and therefore that would indicate that all of these women uh, at the start of the study uh, were vitamin D deficient, and this may have been contributing to their weight gain. When you return those women to a vitamin D replete state, uh, you improve the uh, effect of their uh, insulin system, uh, and this uh, causes them to lose weight. So vitamin D deficiency, vitamin D insufficiency, low levels of vitamin D, low levels of uh, plasma levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D may be a contributing factor uh, in those people who, who gain weight. Um, so the take-home message from this, uh, although this is very interesting, the, the practical take-home message from this is that if you're not already taking a vitamin D supplement and that you're living uh, in northern latitudes, uh, in, in areas where there is very weak uh, a very weak sun um, 
obviously southern latitudes as well where there's very weak sun uh, in the winter and very uh, a strong uh, relatively strong sun in the summer during those winter months your plasma levels of vitamin d will drop and you will become deficient in vitamin d now many people don't uh, go out uh, in the sun enough in the summer anyway because we've been told that the sun's bad for us or we work too hard or we work in buildings and therefore we don't have time to go out and therefore over the course of our lives we tend to be deficient in vitamin D. It's increasingly being shown that you need to take a vitamin D supplement in order to maintain optimal levels of uh, plasma 2,5 hydroxy vitamin D. If you're not taking a supplement already and you're trying to lose weight, I think it would be a very good idea for you to do some research on uh, vitamin D to, to boost your plasma levels in order to be able to uh, make sure that your insulin system is working properly to give you the best chance of losing weight. If you are vitamin D deficient and you're trying to lose weight, this study shows uh, that you may well lose weight uh, following the similar protocol uh, of weight loss that these women uh, followed for a year. They lost uh, weight by performing aerobic exercise and uh, by also uh, changing their diet. Um, however, um, you're not going to lose as much weight as you could do. It's going to be less efficient. Uh, remember, the, the women who actually boosted their plasma levels of 2,5-hydroxyvitamin D uh, actually uh, lost 8.8 .8 kilograms, whereas those women who didn't only lost 5.5. .5. So ask yourself after a year, would I rather lose 8.8 .8 kilograms or would I rather lose 5.5 .5 kilograms? Uh, if you'd rather lose 8.8, .8, you really need to look at your vitamin D levels and that means you need to take a vitamin D supplement because vitamin D just is not in high enough concentrations in the foods that we commonly eat uh, and therefore uh, if we don't have access to the sun, which is uh, true at high latitudes both north and south of the equator, if we don't have access to the sun during the winter, we simply cannot maintain our vitamin D levels uh, at optimal levels. So the take home message from this is that if you are trying to lose weight, uh, make sure you optimize your plasma vitamin D levels, otherwise you may find uh, that your weight loss efforts are inefficient.